Survivor Wrangler is kind of like Left 4 Dead meets Pikmin meets GTA. And it plays like this. You run around a city looking for survivors in this zombie apocalypse. There's a button that you can press which will make you shout out, which gets the attention of any survivors close enough to you. But it'll also get the attention of any nearby zombies. Or instead of holding that button, you can tap it to signal directly to one person, which won't get the attention of anyone else. You can also tell them to stay put. And it's the same idea. Hold the button to make all the survivors around you stop and stay put. Or you can tap it and just tell one of them to stay put. When you have a group following you, defend them from the zombies as you escort them to safety. If a survivor gets taken down, a zombie will start eating them until they're dead. And after a few moments, the survivor will turn into a zombie. But if you can kill the zombie before it kills the survivor, then you can help the survivor up. The survivors you help up are infected, and after a while, they will bleed out, die, and become a zombie. So to prevent that, you need to collect these syringes with the cure and use them on the infected survivors. Infected survivors can be hard to spot, but if you look closely, they're the ones with the limp when they're running. So once you've wrangled up a good batch of survivors, you take them to the entrance of these buildings and make sure that they all get in. And then on the roof of these buildings, there are barrels, which you can light up as a signal to call for a rescue helicopter. Once the signal is lit, all of the zombies in the city will start swarming toward that building and they'll come up to attack you. So you gotta fight off the horde long enough for the helicopter to arrive and rescue the survivors. Each helicopter can only rescue six survivors per trip, so often you end up with a remaining crew that you need to defend for another round. Something that you got to look out for though is that no infected survivors board the helicopter because if they do you risk them turning into a zombie during the flight which puts everyone on board in danger Now, you can go back down into the streets and get more survivors on foot, but if you find a car, that could be a quick way to gather a lot of survivors and keep them out of danger. Also, it's just fun to run down groups of zombies. Honking the horn can get the attention of survivors at a much further distance than the normal on-foot wrangle action, but it also gets the attention of more zombies at a further distance. You could choose to make all the survivors get out of the car all at once, or you could drop one at a time, which can serve as an effective distraction. When you kill a zombie, they drop pickups, so you'll see more ammo for pistols, ammo for automatic rifle, health kits, cure syringes, grenades, and molotovs. Molotovs are fun and can create a temporary line of defense since zombies will light up if they try passing through the fire. But be careful because the characters aren't the only thing affected by fire. If a grenade rolls into the fire, for example, it'll cook for a few seconds before detonating. And the same thing with other molotovs. And grenade explosions will also detonate any additional grenades or molotovs close enough to the explosion. You also have to watch out where you're shooting because both grenades and molotovs can be detonated from being shot. This can get you and your survivors in trouble, but at times it can also be a convenient opportunity. Every now and then, this will happen. You'll be waiting for your rescue helicopter to descend and save your survivors, but instead, it will be a hostile military helicopter. It'll open fire on everyone, zombies, survivors, the player, zero tolerance procedure for containing the virus. And every now and then, you'll come across one of these guys. Giant zombies move a little slower, but once they knock down a survivor, there's no saving that survivor. They pick them up, and they eat them. And for every survivor they eat, they get a little bit bigger, and they get harder to kill. Over time, they can be towering over the rooftops, attack the buildings, and level the buildings. All right, so that's, 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 that's it, that's Survivor Wrangler. And uh, let me just tell you where I'm at with this thing, okay? So as some of you know, this started out as a little personal jam project meant to just have some fun making something that I could make some cool YouTube videos for. So I didn't give it much time. I told myself I would only give it 48 hours total. So a few hours here and there over a few weeks and I would be done. I ended up going over by probably about an additional 10 hours, but honestly, that's all right. I got the prototype I wanted to see. I got to play with it, but holy Holy shit, let me, let me just tell you that when I first started this game, I didn't think I was going to take it this far. And so I built it with a really lousy foundation. My programming of it was really shitty. I programmed things in ways that I would never do on a serious project. I only did it that way because at first, it's faster. But this way of programming things does not 
scale. And as the game grows, I end up having to do way more work than I would have if I just spent more time in the beginning building a more modular foundation. So it started taking me an insane amount of time to get the simplest new features added. Things I've added to other games before in minutes took hours to debug and account for all these exceptions to rules and blah, 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 blah. The lesson here is build games with a strong and scalable foundation, even if the game is going to be small. There are a handful of other features and mechanics I would have liked to have implemented, but I, I got other shit to work on. And honestly, uh, even if this was my focus, I would literally rather start from scratch and build everything all over again with a different framework instead of building on top of this pile of hot trash held together by scotch tape and bubblegum. Uh, so yeah, I uh, hope this was entertaining, maybe a little educational to watch. But before I go, I have a question for you. Should I make this game into a proper game that you can play on Steam? Does all of this stuff look like something you'd want to play? I mean, like, imagine if it wasn't as janky and wasn't made in just one work week and had some cooler graphics and animations and effects and stuff. And imagine if there were more features and voice acting. If you can imagine that and you'd want something like that, then take a look at the questionnaire I have linked in the description. It's a Google form. Give me your thoughts because if enough people merely say they would want to play this, I'll consider making a full and proper version. Let me know what you think. Otherwise, stay tuned, more videos on the way. My new course for how to make a top-down RPG is almost done. All right, and if you want to learn how to make your own games without having to write any code, consider checking out my courses, Made for Beginners, the First Person Horror Course, and Metroidvania Course. All that stuff is linked in the description. Check it out. All right, talk to you guys soon.